All right, so in this video, I would like to show you how we can add validators to our schema. And in order to do that, I want to optimize our workflow right now. So I'm going to show you a package that we can install into our node application that will help us iterate quicker so we don't have to restart our server every time we add a new feature. So let's go over to our directory. We're in um, the snack time project. And let's go npm install node mon. So this is a module that refreshes, it restarts the node server every time there's a change detected in the code. Okay, so it's installed. Now the next thing we need to do to make this work is go into our package.json. And we want to change this line here. This is, every time we run npm start, this command is run, node, and it runs a script in bin www, which is right here. And that script will start the server on port uh, 3000. So instead of node bin www, we want to change it to the new package that we just installed, node mon bin www. Okay, save. We'll go back over and we will npm start. And our project starts without any problems. And now let's see this in action. So I'll go back over and I'll make a change in a file. Let's go to our schema. Let's change the type of the suite property to string from Boolean. Save it. And it automatically restarts the server. So it's pretty cool. It'll help us work quicker. Okay, we can change this back to Boolean and save. And now I want to show you some validators. So we are going to add a validator to one of these properties. Let's add it to the suite property. And let's just do a basic one. The most basic one I can think of is the required validation. So let's remove Boolean. And instead of adding a type, we'll add an object. And then type Boolean required true. And that should update. Perfect. Now let's open up Postman. All right, and now I want to use Postman instead of the browser. We used the browser last time because it was just easy. It was a Git request. Um, but when we're creating new documents in MongoDB, we should really be making posts instead of gets. I just did that for the sake of um, ease. So let's change this to a post request and actually return something in the response because right now, um, if I send this get, it will just perpetually load. So let's cancel it. And let's go over to our root and we are using this right here, router.get snack new. Let's make that a post. And let's plop that down with all of our post requests. There we go. And open up the snack controller right here. And now in our controller, we want to actually return something to the client after this insert operation finishes. So let's first pass in the three arguments that 
all of these controllers have. So the request object, the response object, and next. All right. And now we are going to utilize a promise. So we will type dot then parentheses and result arrow function curly brace and we will return oops response dot json and let's just return the whole result object that the insert operation will return and we'll do that in a second so now let's catch our error. So dot catch, parenthesis, error, arrow function, curly brace, and result dot JSON, error. And this is just for our purposes. Normally you would want to actually return a status, say 500. Um, but right now we're just going to return the actual object that comes with the error. All right, and one very important thing is we need to return this and return each of these results. It's very important with promises that you return the um, inside of the closure as well as the entire promise. Okay. So let's save that and now let's go over to our model and we're going to do the same thing here with uh, our promise. We're going to return it and we are going to return the result here and then return the error. Perfect. So really what's happening here is this insert method is saving a new document to our Mongo database and when it's done this result will return and if it hits an error this will return instead. It will pass it over to our controller which is invoking the method and this will then pass the result of that promise on to this closure which will then send a response to the client with the object from this file. So we're keeping our concerns separate. Alright so we did everything in here yep now let's just test this out go over to Postman and change this to post and hit send. Hey, there we go. We have an object. This is our document right here. There is a new document in our collection with a new object ID, cupcakes, and all of the properties here. Um, now we sent sweet, but we included a validator on it so let's test that validator out let's go back to our model where we're actually creating the document and let's take a look back at the schema so what we're doing is we're saying this is required so let's not include the sweet property just to see what error it throws Let's just delete it and we're we're creating a new document with all the properties but the sweet property. So I'll save and let's hit send. Oh, and there's our error. Perfect. So it's an object. It has um, four properties here, an error property, errors property, underscore message, message and name. Um, so our underscore message here is pretty much the simplest 
and it says snack validation failed and then there's more details up here um, path suite is required so it's pretty cool it tells us exactly what validation failed and there's a lot of flexibility with how you can use this um, you can require people to include their phone number and if they don't include it you know if you don't have some sort of validation on the front end or if you do and somehow it gets by uh, Mongo will reject it and you can send that error back to the front end so we can actually do something else with this required validation there's um, an option to customize the error response that gets sent back so let's go do that now so instead of just saying um, this path suite is required, let's go over to our schema and we need to add brackets, so an array. And this array has two entities. The first is true and the second one will be our actual message. So let's say Come on, I told you to add this. And save. Now let's make another request. There it is. Our message is, come on, I told you to add this. So it's a cool, um, easy way to customize the error response that gets sent back for specific validation. And now I'd just like to continue showing you things that you could do with the required validation. So let's go back. And we have our required, true, and our custom response. Um, instead of the Boolean true, we can actually add a function that returns a Boolean. And the cool thing about this is as long as it returns a Boolean, we can base this on the rest of the properties here. So we can access these properties just like we would with any other context using this. So let's remove this line here and add a function instead. So function curly braces, oops, curly braces. Well, I'll do it on one line. So return this dot snack equals banana save and now let's go over to the model that's actually creating this let's leave it at cupcakes for now and we'll see if that validator um, actually fires we'll, we'll keep sweet removed and in this scenario we're going to be looking for no validation because that is actually resolving to false right here but if we do include banana for this dot snack then this validator is actually going to be turned on and it's going to pick up the fact that we're not including the sweet property so let's try this out. Let's go back over. Let's hit send. And there it is. We created our document successfully without sweet. Um, now let's change it to banana. Save. Send. Oh. There's the error. Path suite is required. So that's pretty useful. Um, we can conditionally turn on and off our required validation.